Hello everyone, welcome to another Planet Zoo video. Today we're back in River Rock Zoo making an enclosure for our tapir and our capuchin monkey. Um, thank you so much for being patient with me. I know I missed a video last week, one crazy week. I um, actually added a member to my family. I rescued a little cockatiel um, that needed a home and so we picked him up last week and he's just been settling in and, and getting used to everything. He doesn't have a name as of yet because I'm super indecisive and picky so we're trying out a couple just to see what fits him best but I was busy with that. Um, in addition I do work full-time and I'm actually a student as well so it was the end of my semester so between that and everything going on in the world. I um, wasn't able to get a video up last week, but I hope that this one makes up for it. Um, I did put a little bit of extra time in here making sure that I got all the details done the way I wanted them to. And first and foremost, let me tell you, capuchin monkeys are a pain in the butt to make an enclosure for. Um, they can escape basically everything and so I did cut out uh, a bit of this video because I spent a great deal of time one when I go to put in the water you'll see I cut most of that out that took me forever because it was surrounded by um, paths and the barrier already and you know it says obstructive but it doesn't tell you by what so I essentially had to remove everything and and start over um, but for you guys it'll happen in the blink of an eye so that'll be good um, but they were able to uh, basically warp through walls and climb up the wood and so I spent a lot of time making sure that the capuchin monkeys weren't going to be able to escape. I do plan to put this on the steam workshop so I wanted you guys to be able to use it and actually be able to contain the monkeys. Um, the tapirs weren't that big of a problem because you know they're they don't climb they're not um, escape artists like the little capuchin monkeys are. But overall, I think they're really cute and this habitat turned out, um, in my opinion at least, really well. I'm pretty happy with it. So in the last episode of River Rock Zoo, we did our um, crocodile habitat, the saltwater crocodile habitat, and that one was completely indoors. Um, this one I went with an indoor-outdoor enclosure. Um, again, just keeping in the theme of what I think a zoo might actually have um, as their facilities. So if we're thinking this is a temperate North American zoo, the birds tapir, uh, birds, birds, birds tapir, uh, <laughs> sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Um, and capucha monkey obviously don't live in North America. Um, so I wanted to make sure that they had like an indoor space that, you know, would ideally be able to temperature control and, you know, stuff like that. They do have an outdoor space. So, you know, on days where the weather's appropriate, they can go outside um, and stuff like that. So yeah, overall, I, I do think it turned out pretty well. Um, the entranceway here uh, is what I did first and then moved on to the building. Um, I do build, like I think I mentioned before, uh, in kind of a sporadic pattern. So I'll start on one thing and then either get bored of it or it's tedious or I need a break and move on to another thing. So I try to make the video as um, smooth and coherent as possible because I certainly don't build in this order. So if you see a few things pop in that you didn't see me build, um, I'll either come back to it later or I cut that part out because I ended up removing it. There specifically was some frame pieces on the front of the building that for whatever reason the capuchin monkeys could um, kind of warp through the wall and climb on it and escape. Um, so I had to remove those all together because no matter what I did, no matter how far out I put them, they were still kind of able to climb on them. So right here I'm just doing the base of the building and I do end up changing it very slightly because I realized that some of these are on the wrong grid lines, like they're on the opposite side. So they don't line up perfectly, but just getting it all lined up and centered on the what's what you're looking at the left side, but would be the right of the building if you're looking at the enclosure ends up being the staff area and facilities and it that area is kind of blank. I never know what to add as far as extras for staff areas, but I think I get a staff room, a keeper hut, and then a surgery suite in there um, that's just kind of all attached. And then um, there is a left and a right indoor space for the animals. Um, I kind of put the what we're over here now looking at as the capuchin side and then the other one as the tapir side. Uh, but just adding those little windows, um, those little windows, the, the pieces with the circles in them, 
is basically the only piece that I wanted to use in this build. Um, I decided I wanted it to be something that had little uh, peek throughs that you can look at the animals and then a little area where they can climb out through. So you'll kind of see I, I put some climbing structures um, through those the two holes that are in the center so that the, the monkeys can climb through. And, and I did originally start that front piece with um, metal the the fencing um, I do end up changing it to glass um, while I was doing this I kind of forgot that that's where the, the guests would be and then you know with monkeys and stuff I think it would be better to have them behind glass so people don't potentially stick their fingers in and um, get a nasty little surprise from the monkeys um, and then here I kind of skipped over making that roof piece because it was really tedious. It didn't take me too long. It was just really repetitive, but it's basically that little, um, I think it's the New World uh, fence posts, um, but just really repetitive and, and over and over again, just making sure that it lines up at 45 degree angles and um, is all even and everything. So that's what the roof is out of. You can see me duplicating it here and selecting all the individual little pieces to make it fit all the way across. I think it turned out okay. Um, I don't think I'm alone in wanting the game to add some sort of mesh roofing, aviary, something like that. I think it would be really cool, but for now that's kind of what we are stuck with. I do end up adding the non-climbable parts to the fence in the back um, because like I said, I do have issues later on with them escaping that I fix with that. And then you can see here, I'm, I'm adjusting where I had put everything kind of on the wrong grid line or the wrong side of the grid line. Um, so I'm fixing that as well. And then just really taking my time to try to make sure the barrier all lines up in the center of all those pieces. Um, the roofing I do skip over finalizing because uh, that is also tedious as well but I do uh, bring out each of the roof pieces a little bit over the edge to create um, eaves. Um, I wish that the game also had eave pieces that weren't angled. Um, I rarely, I mean, unless it's a pitched roof already, I don't use the actual trim pieces. I just end up duplicating and extending the roof pieces out um, if they're flat. And unfortunately in this zoo, basically all the roofs are flat because that is the style that we're going for. Um, so I do wish there was uh, a little uh, Eve, excuse me, Eve uh, extension piece that was flat so that you didn't have to duplicate and separate things from groups and, and stuff like that. This is just a really simple, uh, in, uh, not enclosure, um, entrance for the, the staff area back there. Like I said, I didn't really know much to add to the staff area and I did plan on coming back and giving it a few more details, but um, I did kind of run out of time, even though I took a whole extra week on this video. Like I said, life's been a little crazy with, you know, my new, uh, my new pet and uh, finishing up my semester at school. So I did put a little bit of extra time, but I felt detailing some of the inside of the enclosure was more important than detailing the staff area because um, you don't really see it and you know it is it's honestly just there to be there. I do add a little planter um, so that they can have some plants to look at. I don't know how realistic it would be because it's all indoors and I am by no means a botanist so if I use plants that are supposed to be outdoors. Um, I didn't use the stinging nettles this time um, but gosh every time I open the plant thing like there they are right now. Um, want to use them. They look perfect for just a little filler plant, but I refrained for the safety of the staff and the public. Um, I did not use them. I <laughs> used much safer plants. Anyway, so that's what I'm finishing up now. Um, do thank you guys for tuning in, and if you, if you are able to or not already, please feel free to subscribe or like or leave me a comment. Um, I am kind of stuck as of this point on what animal to add to this specific zoo next. Um, for Sundew Safari Park, I was planning on adding the jaguars next because I think they're really cool. Um, I randomly last night got a little idea for a kind of an enclosure that I wanna see if I can actually 
uh, execute the way that I want it to look. So I'm thinking that those might be the next animals for the other jungle safari type park we have going on. Um, but as far as this park, um, I'm not really sure. Uh, somebody, or I guess a few people had mentioned before that they wanted the South American animals added all in this zoo. So if that's still the case, I think we still have the uh, the anteater, the jaguar, and the llama uh, to add, and happy to add any of those. Just leave me a comment below and let me know what animal you'd like to see, and, and if it doesn't belong to the South American pack and it's one of the original animals, great, then I would be happy to add that one too. Uh, like I said, I am just a little stuck. We are missing, well, no, we do have the, the uh, timber wolves in this zoo. I was going to say we're missing kind of a big ticket item. Um, and I guess the saltwater crocodiles count as a big ticket item too. So maybe some little filler animals. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure where I want to go with this zoo. I will say, um, because I don't have the best setup, uh, the zoo is already struggling just a little bit as far as frame rates and stuff like that. So I may um, end up having to just delete part of this park to work on other parts of it. Um, just to make it so I'm not working through a, a slideshow. Um, but that brings me to some other exciting news. As of right now, I am currently set up in my dining room, um, just because that's where my computer has kind of always been. And um, as I work more and more on it, I did order myself a new desk from Ikea. But again, unfortunately with what's going on, um, it's gonna take a whole 32 days <laughs> to ship to me and the current Ikea near me is closed. They're not doing curbside pickup or anything like that, so I am forced to wait for the uh, mailing system to bring, which is, is totally fine. It gives me time to, to set up the area, and like I said, I do have a setup now, so it's not like um, I'm in any rush, but it will be nice to, to have a desk and, and my own space and everything, so pretty excited about that. It's a it's a very simple just Ikea desk, and I feel like a lot of them just look the same, but it, like I said, it'll be nice. It'll be set up in um, one of the extra rooms in my house, and I'll be able to close the door, and I don't know if you can uh, or not, but if you do hear my animals running around, um, you won't be able to because I'll be able to shut the door and lock them out um, so they don't they aren't able to make crazy noises. Anyway, so I'm getting started on the little island area that I created for the monkeys. This is, uh, what I'm working on right now is one of their little houses. Um, uh, I kind of made these little nest box things that I'm kind of sad they don't end up actually using all that much. Um, I saw one of them go in there, but I do add bedding on the other indoor part and I feel like they like that part better, but it's all right. I think they still look cute. I wanted them to be really simple. Um, so I, I didn't add uh, a ton of detail to these little houses, but just little simple wooden kind of nest box type houses. And um, the idea for this was making just kind of like a monkey island. Um, I will say, although I tried my best, I couldn't get the keepers to walk over the bridges that I made. I tried widening them. I tried um, adjusting the angle on them and for whatever reason they just didn't want to uh, walk on there which is kind of a bummer but um, I didn't put anything uh, important on there so there's not really any need for them to get there unless you know of course the animals go to the bathroom but um, I didn't play through it too long but I uh, when I was playing through it I didn't see any major issues um, that might be the only potential issue with this enclosure is the fact that this is a little island. So I wish that they would allow keepers to walk through, you know, shallow water or if, you know, they have the climbable material for the monkeys, if they had some traversable material for the keepers, like that was specifically meant to be, um, like flooring pieces, but not, not the big square flooring pieces that are on the grid. Um, like the ones that can be used as flat roofing as well. I'm talking about like like these little log pieces, but if they somehow, you know, made it so keepers knew that they could walk over certain pieces, I think that would be really helpful um, as far as, you know, making these little islands and stuff like that. 
And then from here, I'm just adding a bunch of climbing structures and stuff. These logs, I kind of track all over the enclosure. And I was pretty pleased because the monkeys do actually use them how I intended to. Later on, I, I kind of put one across the front of the glass area because I was thinking like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if you're standing here and the, the monkey basically runs all the way across the log uh, in front of you a couple inches from the glass. And um, it worked out that way. They did actually run uh, on it exactly like I wanted them to. So that was pretty neat. Um, but yeah, just duplicated that little house over and made two. Um, the next thing that I struggle with in this enclosure, gosh, I feel like all I'm talking about is how difficult this enclosure was. It really wasn't that difficult as far as doing it. It just logistically making it work in the game. I wanted it to be something that could work, um, you know, in, in any zoo. And if you didn't want to have any of the stuff turned off as far as animal needs and stuff like that, it was still going to work. So that's really what made it a little bit difficult for me. And then of course I wanted the animals to be able to be contained because it won't work in any zoo if, if the animals can escape. But anyway, the, the trees and stuff were kind of a pain because if I got too close to the ceiling um, or that those fence post pieces at the top, the monkeys could actually just jump through it, which I mean, it, it makes sense looking at it because the monkeys are small and those things are obviously climbable. But these trees that I add right here, I completely forget what they're called, but um, I had to really play with them in order to make sure that they don't, uh, the monkeys couldn't climb up them and reach the ceiling. So I did a lot of that off camera because I messed with it for a few minutes just to make sure that it was good. Um, I tried to add them somewhere else in the enclosure and it didn't work. Um, so I just ended up having to use those other, the green trees that you saw me kind of use at first. Um, but yeah, so again, I, I think it turned out pretty well. I am gonna leave you guys with uh, this right now. And uh, I really hope you guys enjoy. Um, again, if you could like or subscribe or comment, um, all of the above, really appreciate it. And, and any comments are really appreciated as well. Just to let me know what you think. Let me know what animal we should do next. Anything you think I can improve. Um, if you guys want to see a tour of the whole zoo once we add a couple more things happy to do that as well just let me know what you are thinking and um i will leave you guys with the time lapse um i'm not going to come back at the end i apologize again i'm on a time crunch this week and i just don't have time to um to do a little tour of the exhibit, but there are plenty of cinematic shots at the end. Um, I did add a couple extra ones in there so you guys can get a really good look at the zoo. And, and again, if you wanna do a tour of the zoo, I can record something then. But until then, thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time.